And now uh, the latest comments from a former captain and goalkeeper Hugo Lloris about this watch that Daniel Levy gave to the players. Um, a sponsored watch, but a very elegant timepiece, apparently. But key to that was on the back of it, before they set out to play Liverpool in that 2019 uh, Champions League final, it had finalist written on the back of it, engraved on the back of it. And um, Hugo Lloris was surprised. I think basically what he's saying in this book is why didn't Levy wait until after the final when they may or may not have won it? But if they had won it, it would have been better receiving a watch with winner on it. What's he doing in all of this, Hugo Lloris? Where are we at with that? Where are Tottenham fans at with the fact that Tottenham haven't won anything for so long and that the man at the top is still there, Daniel Levy. Stephen's a big Tottenham fan. Stephen, good morning. What do you want to say? Good morning, Jim. Loving the show. Not loving Hugo Lloris and his uh, comments. He's really Fermila Bush. I mean, Hugo Lloris went on way too long at first. He was appalling at the end. Remember the 6-0 at Newcastle? He was absolute disgrace as a goalkeeper towards the end. A good servant, but went on way too long. Look, he's on a flogger book, isn't he? But let's, let's, look, Levy, yeah, he's had his... He's, he's entitled, he deserves some criticism, but look, 65 million for Dominic Solanke. The last night, Tottenham's winning mentality. Look, we were without our two best centre backs. I knew it was going to be tough last night in, in that atmosphere. And, you know, if you haven't got Romero or Van Der Ven, you're going to struggle. And there were other injuries as well. But um, I just think people just jump in on Tottenham all the time. You watch Ange, he's come for a difficult time recently after the Palace debacle, but he's yeah. in City. And City. They, 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 a lot of the top players came on, not Harlem, but we beat them. Brilliant performance. Destroyed Villa, put them back in their box. <laughs> I predict the Spurs will get top four this year, and I think they will win the Europa League and possibly the League Cup. And then you can come back, all you Spurs knockers, and say, <laughs> mm, this and it's, it's what we do, mate. I like that, Stephen. Stephen, here's Troy. Troy, what do you make of what Stephen says? He's, he, he says, no, there are grounds for serious optimism at the moment. I like that. Yeah, I'm with him. Brushing Lloris to one side. I, I agree. There is there is grounds for optimism. I think he's he's got to be careful as well, though, because if it goes the other way, then this is going to get played. This clip's going to get played for a long time. But I think he's right. I think you have um, room for optimism. I would. My big concern is if you're going to go and compete on those three fronts in which you just spoke about, top four, uh, Europa League plus um, League Cup. If your two centre halves go down, you need better than what you've currently got as your backups. You, and well, again, it's if a you... January transfer window, and I expect us to strengthen then. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, it's 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 a room for optimism for Spurs. We do like to get not we we haven't we've never had the dirty Russian money that Chelsea had. Oops, sorry there, Sam. <laughs> but um, we're we're a club going forward. We've got the best stadium in the world, and we've got a very good manager. And yep. he's changing the mentality at Spurs. We are, you know, is he? Like the old Brazil. Is he changing the mentality at Spurs? You conceded 27 shots last night at Galatasaray. Could have yeah, got beat 8-2. It was, wasn't good, but we scored, we scored the most goals this season in the Premiership, didn't we? So we must have been... Did you get a trophy for that? Like the old Brazil. The old Brazil thing. You score five, we'll score six. I don't think the mentality's <laughs> changed Go that on, much. Stephen. Here's Gavin, well, another you... Tottenham fan. Stephen, thank you for that. Do, do you uh, concur with uh, Stephen's views, Gavin? Where are you at with it? Where am I at? I go to most games. There's a few things I want to say. First of all, Troy Deeney, I watched him once destroy Spurs. I don't know where he was for the first 70 minutes. I think he came off the bench. We were winning 1-0. And he showed everything as a leader. And he got Watford back in the game. And I think he actually even scored. Yeah, we beat you 2-1. Around. And I was on the whole game, mate. It's just uh, you lot were battering us. That's the difference. We're gone. Yeah, but you, 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 you went around the players. I mean, I coach football... At, a fairly good level, and we yeah. we won a lot of trophies. But I had players like you that go around and have a go at other players. As for Hugo Lloris, I'd never even known of a French. I don't know why he was a captain. I mean, even De Gaulle was a major, and then named himself as a general. I mean, <laughs> and then if you're going to have this, uh, I won't swear, say something about it. Say it when you're there and do something about it. Yeah. I mean, he was complicit with it. Yeah. And and then and as with Ange, God, I. I lost my faith a bit when we was at Brighton and I told my mate who used to play for Spurs to get stop getting me tickets because I'm not sure on him, but he is slowly winning me over. This high line and stuff like that. But last night, I mean, Madison has been dying in games and, and, he, and, he, and he needed to be dropped. That midfield last night is not our midfield. And more importantly than anything, we play at 2 o'clock. If we beat Ipswich... We go above Arsenal and Chelsea and we're into third. There you go. 
Now that needs an open top bus parade, right. doesn't it? If you go above Arsenal, get that booked in. <laughs> you're happy, you're clobbering I mean, them. You're I not know. having this. I just don't see it. I, I, if you're asking me as we sit here now, can I envisage a scenario where Poster Cogley playing this brand of football lifts a trophy at the end of the season? No. All right. David's down under, literally, in Australia. Big Tottenham fan. David, how could we not bring you to air? Good morning. What do you want to say? Yeah, uh, I want to make three points. Uh, first point is, I know it's outside of your control, but to talk about the night, the events in Amsterdam last night, as clashes between fans and protesters is wholly inaccurate. Those fans of the Israeli team were targeted and as a disgrace, and UEFA and the authorities should be throwing the book there. That's number one. Number two, Stephen, the uh, other Tottenham fan, talking about the best stadium in the world. Well, as Glenn Hoddle said recently, the best stadium and the best training ground will not win you trophies. We have got a better team this year because Solanke, a proper striker, is in the team. We and what, and what about poor old Lloris not liking his watch? Well, Lloris is being disingenuous here. I understand he's got a book to sell. He was a club captain for a number of years. He never should have a goalkeeper as a club captain anyway. And for him to blame a watch, the fact that we had an injustice of a awful penalty decision in the first minute, but we played like a drain for the rest of it. Pochettino should never have picked Kane. And the men, but the, on the other hand, the mentality of the club and the ownership was the fact that we got to the Champions League final was like winning a trophy. Mm. Whereas Liverpool, the disappointment of the previous year and what happened with uh, Sa- uh, Mo Salah and Ramos, they went out there, got the early goal, and then shut up shot. We were, we, some of us felt the vibe was the pinnacle and the peak was getting to that final. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And whether we won it or not was different. Okay, so D- different. David, from way sure down there, down good. under, give me your thoughts. What's your best place finish this season? Uh, I'd like us to win a trophy and get Europa again because we've got a better team but a weaker squad. Oh, not, not what a goal. That. David, thank you for that. It's amazing, Troy, how uh, that passionately they feel yeah. about where the club is at any given time. But I, but I agree with him. They've got a better team, but not a great squad. Um, yeah. I just I just look I look at the midfield and I think, I'm not sure. One If one gets injured, then it's a problem. I'd look at the, the back four. Yeah. If one or two get injured, it's a problem. And if again, Solanke gets injured. Yeah, and I'm all, I think they can kind of deal with that a little bit, but I'm also not... Um, a massive fan of the goalie, even if I'm being totally mm. honest. So, a few problems, but as of right now, it's not all doom and gloom as it, as it sounds on this. It's just uh, they're building. One okay. of the callers there mentioned James Madison. Mm. It was a big night for him last night because he's not getting in the Premier League team. He was average. Okay. All right. He's got to work on that, hasn't he? Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.